There's a reason they called it the Wild West. Bass Reeves made the astonishing journey from escaped slave to U.S. Marshal. Jim Webb has murdered three of our men. So which of you is willing to go out there and finally bring him in? This is the true story of Bass Reeves on the trail of a killer. I'm just a messenger, but this message comes to you from the United States of America. I was just a young man when I first headed west. In the years that followed, I became a cowboy, a gunslinger, and even served as sheriff of Dodge City, one of the most lawless towns in the country. My name is Bat Masterson. Now I'm a reporter, and I've come west again to chronicle the world that I know best, the American West. The lure of gold, land, destiny flooded the frontier with men both good and bad. These are the incredible true tales of the Wild West. Mr. Masterson, I presume. Welcome to Fort Smith, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure's all mine, Judge Parker. I have heard a lot about you over the years. Well, then I'm glad we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> nope. But I would like to thank you for agreeing to tell me what you know about the man we are here to talk about. So I take it you couldn't get old Bass to agree to an interview? No, sir. But it wasn't for lack of trying. <laughs> no surprise there. Bass was never one to sing his own praises. I don't expect there are many who know Bass better than you do. Bass Reeves was one of the finest lawmen I've ever known. If I'm not mistaken, he was born right here in Arkansas as a slave. That's right. Colonel George Reeves was his owner. And when Reeves went off to war fighting for the Confederacy, he took Bass along with him. Bass escaped, as I recall. More like he was running for his life. I guess there's just so much abuse a man can take. Bass headed west, eventually made it into Indian territory where he ran into some Cherokee. And they took him in as one of their own. Taught him how to track, how to hunt. And he learned their language too. Yep, and the Creek, Seminole, Chickasaw, you know what's really funny? Bass could speak all those languages, but he never learned to read or write English. Huh. He once told me that he lived happily there in the Indian territories, and he would have stayed there too, until he learned that Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 63. Making him a free man. Hmm. So he no longer was a man on the run. He decided to come back home, right here to Arkansas. Now, how did you come to know him? Oh, I'd heard about Bass and his reputation. So when President Grant directed me to hire 200 new deputies to bring law and order to the Indian territories, there wasn't a better candidate to be found. After me. I, Bass Reeves, do solemnly swear. I, Bass Reeves, do solemnly swear. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I'm guessing there were a few people who weren't too happy about you recruiting a former slave to the U.S. Marshal Service. I knew how exceptional Bass was, but few others would acknowledge it. That all changed after the Jim Webb affair. 
Jim Webb. Name rings a bell. The worst of the worst. Ruthless killer. He murdered a preacher. Shot him dead because a little brush fire in his land swept over to Webb's ranch. So I sent three of my best men to bring him in. Commander there with your hands in the air. I'm going to count to five. One. Two. Three. Never made it to five, Marshal. Jim Webb has murdered three of our best men. And I want him, dead or alive, it's no difference to me. So which of you is willing to go out there and finally bring him in? These men were your friends. You mean to tell me there's not one of you man enough to go out there and bring in the man who killed him? I'll serve that warrant, Judge. I could not have been more proud of Bass at that moment. But the fact that he also had a family weighed heavily on my mind. What's wrong? It's not worth it. I, I do appreciate this house. I truly do. And I know how much your job means to you, but... But what? But it's not worth it if I lose you. Don't you worry about me, Nelly. I'll be just fine. I just don't understand why they have you going after this terrible killer. I volunteered. You volunteered. You promised me that you will come home to me and our baby. I promise. I have never let you down, and I don't plan on starting now. So Bass took that warrant, and off to Chickasaw country he went, which he knew well. Did he go alone? Oh, no, no. I sent one of my best posse men with him, Floyd Wilson. Although it did take a little extra pay to get Floyd to do it. You well, didn't want to take orders from an ex-slave. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. He just wasn't that enthusiastic about meeting Jim Webb. <laughs> <laughs> but he saddled up, and with Bass, along they went. Bass's unorthodox plan to snare Webb depended on a clever ruse. But the closer they got to Webb, the more Floyd began to doubt Bass's plan. So, were you telling me, were we just gonna sashay up to his cabin? Say, hello, Mr. Webb. We have a warrant for your arrest, so if you'd be so kind as to slip in these handcuffs for us, we'd be much obliged. And I have a plan, Floyd. Don't you worry. You just follow my lead. And look, we ain't too far from this place now. Well, how do you know that? Can't you smell that pine sap burning? They got a fire going. I don't smell nothing. Do you smell the cow manure? Nope. I don't smell that neither. Manure tells me there's a ranch close by. I'll even bet that right here, is where our fellow deputies spent their last night before they went in looking for Webb. Well, man, how would you know that? It's a spot we picked too, ain't it? There's water, we got trees for cover, we got grass for the horses. There's ashes over there. Somebody built a fire not too long ago. Now, hurry up and finish fixing this fire so we can get some grub. Dawn will be here before you know it. Yeah, well, I just hope we live to see the next one. Oh, more. 
Morning, 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 gentlemen. So sorry to disturb you on this beautiful morning that the Lord has blessed us with. But I'm afraid that my friend here and me, we seem to have got ourselves a little bit lost. And we was hoping that maybe you might help us and let us water our horses. Maybe we could buy some food off you. We ain't eaten a thing since, since breakfast yesterday. OK, but you can't stay long. The boss just went to town. He don't like strangers. Thank you, sir. Come on, Floyd. This plan seems ridiculous and risky. Maybe so, but it proved to be ingenious. Floyd, now that whiskey right there, that's for these gentlemen. That's for their hospitality. You sure don't have much to say. I'll let this one here do all the talking. Two, they was lost, and we just helped them try to find their way. You must be the big boss. I am so pleased to make your queen, sir. Y your men here were kind enough to let us rest, water our horses, but we, we, we was just fixing to be on our way. Is that right? Yes, sir. Where are you all headed? Bartlesville, but somewhere along the way we got turns around. Where are you from? Well, sir, we're from... Does this one talk or can he get a word in edgewise with all your jaw flapping? Well, sir, we, we, we come all the way from Little Rock. Yeah, I bought me some land up near Bartlesville. I, I got a map of that land right here in my vest pocket, boss. I, I can't read a course, and well, Floyd, he ain't no good with maps neither. That's how comes we got lost. You, you think maybe you could take a look for us? Marshal Deputy Reeves. And what you're holding there is a warrant for your arrest for murder. <laughs> that was a trick that Bass pulled more than once. He'd hand the man the warrant and tell him it was a, a deed or a treasure map or some such thing. Very clever. The second that he saw the man take the paper with the shoot in hand, he'd make his move. So what happened to Jim Webb after Bass arrested him? Nah. Unfortunately, they had to bring him to a jail in Paris, Texas, which is where he killed that preacher. Did he hang? He would have if he'd been in my courtroom. Oh, I know. I know what you're thinking. Judge Isaac Parker, the hanging judge, took pleasure in sending men to the gallows. Well, with all due respect, Judge, you did have a pretty good run. I believe it was 79 men you sentenced to hang? Yes, that sounds about right. And each of them were convicted of either rape or murder. I took no pleasure in sending those men to the gallows. In fact, I do not believe in capital punishment. But as a judge, I have no choice but to exact the government's punishment that is mandated by the law. Now, on the other hand, if ever there was a man worthy to hang, it was Jim Webb. But you said he didn't hang. So what happened to him? Ah, some fool judge in Paris decided to grant him bail. So of course he skipped bond and disappeared. So I wrote another warrant. Floyd is already riding with another posse, Mass, and he won't be back for a couple more weeks. And unfortunately, I can't find anybody else willing to ride with you. So I think it's best I just hold on to this warrant. I do not want you going after Webb alone. Trouble with that, Judge, is it gives Webb a big head start. Now, he wouldn't be stupid enough to go back to his ranch, so I need to track him. The warmer his trail, the better.
I did send a lot of bad men to their death. Mr. Masterson, you're right. To send a good man out there, like Bass Reeves, knowing that he may not come back alive, well, that, that just tore me up. Come on, Millie. You can't just not talk to me about this. It's just not fair. Fair? You tell me what's fair about you going off by yourself to arrest that killer, a man who every other deputy is afraid to go after. I took an oath. I put my hand on that Bible. The Bible ain't gonna stop a bullet, Bass, and it ain't gonna take care of your family when you're dead. Someone has got to bring Jim Webb to justice, Nellie. And why does it have to be you again? Are you really doing this to prove to a bunch of white men that you're worthy of that badge you wear? Bass, those men may never accept you, no matter how many bad men you arrest. Bass set out alone towards Chickasaw country asking everyone he met if they had seen Jim Webb. When he got a tip that Webb was camping out in the nearby foothills, he rode to Bywaters, the only general store in the area. He knew that sooner or later, Webb would have to turn up to resupply. So he decided to just wait him out, knowing that Webb would venture into that store at some point. And then, sure enough, Messenger. But this message comes to you from the United States of America. Now, are you gonna come out of there, or am I gonna have to come in after you? Let's see if you are man enough to come in and get me. Marshal! There's a back door. I'm going get. Get out of here. All right, Webb, come on out. We got you surrounded. Come on, Webb. <laughs> Bass Reeves was the country's first African-American U.S. Deputy Marshal serving west of the Mississippi. He made more than 3,000 arrests, killed 14 criminals in the line of duty, and was never once shot. 
Known as the Hanging Judge, Isaac Parker served as a U.S. Circuit Judge for 21 years and presided over 13,000 cases. He is credited with bringing law and order to the Western Territories. Well, as a former lawman myself, I can tell you that Bass Reeves is exactly the kind of man you want wearing that badge. Judge, I got this nagging question. And what is that, Mr. Masterson? I just can't help but wonder why he was so committed to the law, even to the point of risking his life to defend it. You know, I wondered that same thing. I even asked Bass about it once. Here are Jim Webb's boots and guns. He'll never kill another man again. Why do you do it, Bass? Why do you risk your life every time you go after a man like Webb? It's the law, sir. If we don't live by it, we ain't got nothing. You got any more wants for me, Judge? <laughs>